Hi, my name is Jessica. I am the Digital Innovation Librarian at Brookfield, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the very basics of 3D printing and show you how our Prusa MK3S 3D printer works. So now I'm going to explain how a 3D print is actually created. So I'm going to start up here with the filament. The filament is fed right into the top of the extruder. With the Prusa, we have an automatic filament loader, so all we need to do is place it into the top of the extruder and it will auto load for us. The extruder is where the filament is going to be heated up enough to actually create and build our 3D design. So for us using PLA it's going to be around 200 and 215 degrees Celsius so that's around 400 degrees Fahrenheit so it's very very hot. Um, the filament is going to move through the extruder down to the nozzle or what you could call the hot end and the hot end is what's going to actually build the 3D design layer by layer. So the extruder is going to move around in the pattern of the design and build it up layer by layer. That's why 3D printing does take as long as it does. It takes multiple hours for even a smaller print um, because the 3D printer is moving so slowly to make sure that each layer is cooled before it adds on more. And that is the function of the cooling fan. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about filament. You heard me say PLA. That is the type of plastic that we use to print here at the library. Um, even though this PLA is really shiny and almost looks like real copper, it is all plastic. There is a type of PLA with a very high metal content, and this printer is capable of printing that type of filament if we were to put on a stronger nozzle. Right now our nozzle is brass, which is perfectly fine and plenty strong enough to print plastic. However, if we're looking at printing metal, we do need a stronger nozzle. So that is one possibility. There are definitely lots of other types of PLA as well. Um, this is actually glow-in-the-dark PLA, which prints exactly like regular PLA, but it does glow in the dark afterwards. Um, and then probably the most common that you'll see is this kind of matte finish PLA. Um, the plastic takes very well to color, so you can find just about any color with any finish that you'd like um, on Amazon or Hatchbox, which is the type of filament that we use. PLA is very easy to manipulate, so you can find all sorts of different colors and finishes as well. Another really common type of filament that might be used would be PETG, it's a little bit less porous than PLA, and another common one would be ABS. ABS does um, produce fumes when it gets heated up, so it requires ventilation. However, it's pretty popular because it reacts with acetone. So you can actually dip your finished print in acetone, and depending on the size and detail of the print, you would leave it in the acetone for a different amount of time. Um, but then when you take it out, it's super polished and almost a mirror-like finish. So that's another popular option. Um, but for the vast majority of people, PLA is going to be able to do everything that you need it to do. It is also non-toxic and biodegradable, so that makes it really easy for almost any project that you could think of. So now we're actually going to print a 3D design. So the way that the design gets to the Prusa is actually on an SD card. So what I've done is taken the design and put it into the Prusa Slicer software, which gets it prepared to be printed. And then I load that design onto an SD card and the SD card gets placed right here in the side of the design. So I've already selected it. I had it preheated a little bit, but it just finished preheating now. Um, and what it's gonna do is print a test line first here after calibration. So it has just printed a test line, which is helpful for us to be able to pick out any problems with the nozzle before it actually starts printing. And what it's done now is drawn a parameter around where it will print the 3D print so we can see exactly what will happen. And I will show you guys a close up. So 
our print has finished. That particular print only takes about an hour. The Prusa is really nice because it actually has this flexible steel plate that you can just take right off the print bed and then it's actually flexible. So all I have to do is bend it a little bit and the print will come loose. Um, so it's really that easy with the Prusa and you can see how it finished. If I wanted to make it smoother, I could sand it down, but this looks perfectly good to me. So if you want to learn more about 3D printing, please feel free to visit our website. And we also recommend Tinkercad to get started with 3D design.